We still do seven NUFC Matters show a week for free. But if you want to help support NUFC Matters, then there are a few ways of doing it. Hit the like button on each live broadcast and video. This helps the channel grow. Hit the subscribe button and select the all notifications bell so you don't miss a single show. If you want to help us financially, then you can join the channel using this button with the membership starting at $1.99 a month. Or... You can drop us a donation in the chat using a super sticker. We're also looking for sponsors. If you'd like your brand advertised on the flies for the show and featured during the ad break, then email john at nufcmatters.com to arrange. Good evening, welcome to NUFC Matters, Jordy's here, Jordy's there, we've had a, a bit of a sabbatical on this show, a couple of weeks off just with me uh, being away and doing various things, but uh, and matches being played midweek, uh, but Mitch uh, is drying off, uh, Stu is here, Kevin's here, George, Magnus and Al. Hi everybody. Uh, Mitch, I've got to ask you, um, are you okay with this uh, horrendous weather that we're seeing in Dubai? I've never seen nothing like it. The, the, the thing is, Dubai's not set up for rain anyway. They don't really think about drainage and sort of making the, the, the houses waterproof. It's more about making them able to take air con and the sun, sun and the heat. Um, and usually every year you get two or three days where you get an absolute ton of rain, which is basically a year's rainfall. Um, and you do get the odd flood here and there, and it can be a bit inconvenient. Um, what we've had in the last two days is about two years' worth of rain in 48 hours. So an already, um, an, a city already not really built for that just couldn't cope. There's still communities partly underwater. I gather there's one community not far away from me where half of it's had to be evacuated and people are being rescued from their first floors because they're worried about letting them go downstairs into the water because it might be electrified. Um, it is the, it's it's been chaos. The roads have been chaos. I've just been downstairs. Um, our internet's just really come back on here in the last sort of half an hour, and I've been downstairs in the basement helping people who couldn't get their cars out of the basement in time yesterday. So there's uh, going to be quite a few insurance claims, shall we say? Um, and my gut feeling is the words. Act of God may be used by said insurers <laughs> on a regular basis, but um, let's see. Um, it's been a bit mad, but you know what? Fair play to the communities, um, to the very low paid workers who've done more than that bit to help everybody. Some of them being stranded themselves. Um, this is where you see the measure of people and people coming together. And, and some of that's been really heartening to see. Um, in a city that's glitz and glam, it sometimes be a bit more to see stuff like that. It's been really, really, really heartening. Um, we got lucky at work. I think everybody saw the video I put on Twitter. Uh, that was our reception area yesterday at one point when one of the girls said to me, can you hear water, Doc? And I sort of tiptoed around the corner. and It was just unbelievable. Water fall through the bloody lights of the lot. Um, all the important equipment's been okay. 
Uh, we actually got the surgery back up and running today, and we should be back in normally tomorrow, uh, which I think is a massive achievement from everybody at, at, at work. Um, and so, yeah, it, it's been an interesting time. Felt like the end of days at one point, I've got to say. Yeah, I can um, And so, and, and uh, I think everything should start to come back to normal by the end of the week. And that's all for the weather and over to yeah. Steve. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, wait, he's like, he's like a modern day Wincy Willis, wasn't he? Um, uh, yeah, I'm glad you're okay, mate. That's that's the most that's important thing. Big shout out to Steve Bennett as well, who's out in uh, is out in Dubai how, as well. How was Stu? How did you miss some of this? Well, I said before when we started, what happened was, as you know, I left Dubai on Monday afternoon and the, the storm came through Bahrain Monday evening, so I just got here, been away from home for two weeks. So the place was all stuffy and everything else. I put tried to put the AC on and it wouldn't work. Uh, oh. <laughs> then the storm started, it was thunder, lightning, really strong winds, like 80 mile hour winds, and then the rain. But we got... Uh, I think it was about three inches or so uh, between, it depends which part of Borean, but between three and five inches and 12 hours. Um, it, but it seemed to just skirt past us. I know that sounds bad as it was, but uh, it looks like Borean, sorry, Borean missed most of it. And then uh, I would say Dubai took the brunt, but the worst was Oman, wasn't it, further up the coast? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, it, it was like, it's one of those once in a generation storms. But uh, they, they got, uh, we got a message from work because bear in mind, it would have been my first day back in over two weeks, saying if you live certain in certain places, don't even try and come to work. But I was on the list of, yes, you have to attend. <laughs> there you go. You can't go <laughs> There's the thing. Yeah, get the British in, no problem. <laughs> That's used to the We've got a campaign going on in the chat. Get George, get George back on the top row. Um, the well, reason he's, he's not right on, where he is. The reason he's not <laughs> on the top row tonight is because we want to start with this um, this ludicrous story that started circulating um, over the weekend, I would say, and, and then drifted into into the you know the the, the, the early week and you know, more or less saying Amanda Stavely's resigned from the club is is, is it's it's as daft a story as I've seen in a long time, uh, Mitch, and. Um, you know, one of the newspapers, um, which which I read today, is is literally used that headline and and then used you know all of the stories about the legal cases she's got involved in. You know, it's all tenuous links. You know, to why you know people would believe the story now. You can see why people are running with the narrative when when in essence it's what we would describe and most you know rational people describe as housekeeping. It, it's as simple as Absolutely. that. She hasn't, she hasn't resigned from the club, Mitch. That's exactly the word, is housekeeping. Um, many moons ago, we discussed this when we were talking about buying Mike Ashley out of the club. He had subdivided the club into many smaller uh, companies to deal with different arms and bits. Um, it was tied in with the fact that he then subdivided those companies between Mike Mash Alpha and Mash Beta. Um, it made it a nice little complicated web that was difficult to follow, particularly when he was hiving off assets to keep or sell on it and keep the money. So, for example, um, we know some club properties were sold and Mike Ashley took the money that never went back into the club. So, for example, we know that um, food and beverage outlets, there was a company set up for that. It was never really used. It's been dormant most of the time. And there was something like, it was something ridiculous, like 96 different companies. And and the, one of the challenges we had is if you were getting a buyer to talk to Mike Ashley was, well, is what he's selling what he bought? And he wasn't selling all of the companies. He wanted to retain some of the companies, ones with media rights and ones with uh, image rights and um, where, where you get the basically what he did with Rangers, where he kept the, kept the badge. And so he's still making money off Rangers and their products with the badge on, even after he was long gone. Um, and I think that was what his aim was. Now, thankfully, we were wise to a lot of that, and we got lots of the companies. Now, a lot of these companies are meaningless and dormant, but they had to have people in as directors. And it made sense for that to be people involved with Canterville, so Amanda, Maydad and the Rubens. Fast forward to now, 
We've got a situation where they have made a change in terms of putting money into the club, that it no longer has to be in the 80-10-10 proportion. That frees PIF up to put money into the club without having to worry about where the Rubens and the man down there that are getting their money from. And that's advantageous. Um, it does, however, dilute their share proportion. But I would think in terms of what those shares are worth now, even with a diluted share, they've probably still made a lot of money out of that. Um, and whatever happens going forward, um, and I think there is a suggestion going forward that they may eventually be um, eased to the side, it would be, I think, suicide for PIF to remove um, Amanda, Maydad and the Rubens from involvement with the club in one way, shape, form or the other going forward. Um, because I think she's a very useful face for PIF in many ways, in, in shapes and forms. Um, so I think a lot of people are looking at this activity at Company's House and put making two and two equals four, but it's not. Yeah, yeah, you're actually making making pie. It's it, it's no it, it, you're way to the mark to use an Alan Oliver uh, phrase. Um, there are things going on at Company's House that very much are housekeeping. There may be it may be a nice distraction from other things that they're doing to to front load and take advantage of the laws as they are and the laws that will soon change. Um, but either way, um, to suggest that it's anything other than that, I think is um, is fanciful um, at best. In fact, I would dare say it's very being very deliberately uh, provocative with regards to the fan base and getting people worried at a time when we shouldn't be worried. We should be looking at where we're at and looking at what we've been able to achieve with the injury list. Look at the Champions League, that good God, we were a notch chuff from being involved much further down the line. Um, and we can sort of, we're back in sort of control of what we're doing on the pitch almost now. Um, and so a lot of this genuinely is white noise, should be ignored. And then going forward, the real substance will come out. And the real substance will be not as dramatic, not as fanciful and not as worrying for Newcastle United going forward. Yeah, I mean, Stu, you can reiterate what Mitch has said, really. It's, uh, you know, you deal in business and, and deal with contracts and stuff like that. I mean, this is, uh, you know, this is just this is just waffle that the papers have come out with. It is. It's Clickbait. Well, it's, it's clickbait is exactly the right phrase. But to be fair, I, I was guilty of falling for it as well, because as I mentioned there, I was what, two weeks away and I've been thrown back in and there's so much to catch up on. So I can only intermittently flit in and out of Twitter. And then I, I was tagged into something. I looked and I thought, oh, well, because we've said for a long time that the plan is to phase Amanda out, whether it's over three years or five years, but she can sell her shares at a higher price because the club's worth more. And that's her thank you for all the hard work she's done. And she would still retain like a non-executive role. So I, I just thought with a court case, and it was a quick, but to, to, to be honest with you, Steve, the first thought that came in my head when I seen it, that they had, it said that Amanda was off uh, off it, and Jamie Rubin, which was the bigger surprise, to be fair. He was off it, but Darren Eels remained as a director. I just had this vision, and I shouldn't really share this on a, on a platform, but of Darren Eels standing in these boxer shorts in front of the mirror, channeling these inner he man saying, I have the power, you know what I mean? <laughs> so he was like the face of the of of the company in the UK until he realised that he was the plastic e man and the real power was moving his arms and legs from Riyadh. So uh, that that was my initial thought. But um, once I had time to dig into it and, and we bounced the uh, research off each other in our in our, in our chat, it became clear that the, what they're doing is just as the phrase that Mitch mentioned. Then it was one that Steve Hasty said it was housekeeping. You know, they're, they're just taking the names of companies that have no value to them. You know, so it's 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 downsizing in the, in the right way. And, and I think that's probably the best way to, to, to explain it. So the, the, to put people's mind at rest, that Amanda is still a shareholder, although her shares will reduce over over time. And rightly so, that she, she gains...
financially from it because none of us would be sitting here talking about Newcastle challenging for Europe again if she hadn't been so persistent in her crusade to, to get to get this club taken over and released from the grips of Mike Ashley. Uh, and one of the things I'd like to say as well about another channel, uh, another YouTube channel, I thought Adam Pierce did a very good piece earlier uh, to Elias some fears as well. And what he actually did was research. And unfortunately for me, I have a full-time job, but Adam had the time to, to do the research and, and he put across a very good uh, explanation of what these things actually meant. So I think credit where it's due. Um, but they, they should, even if it was true, there's nothing, there's nothing to worry about. Uh, we know who's at the helm. We know what direction they want to take the club. And the, the percentages really don't mean that much to us. Uh, and initially, it could have been a way of freeing up, like there's going to be a cash splurge. And by diluting Amanda's shares, it made it more plausible. I think that's what they, I won't mention the newspaper, and, but that, that, I think that's what the first report was trying to allude to, that the she, she's on her way out. But there's always positives in everything. And the main thing is that it's shown that Newcastle United that we club in the northeast still can grab national headlines on a regular basis, even with things that aren't true. Yeah, Kev. I mean, you know, it, it's frustrating for you, I guess, um, and the lads, you know, who who live abroad. When you know you see a story, I mean, you know, come come from a, 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 a British newspaper, you probably wake up in a different time zone and go. Oh, what's all this? And I mean, you know, there's been there's been a roller coaster going on on this story today. You, you know, you yeah. What, what's your what's your take on it? I mean, do, do you just do, do you fall yeah? For I'm it? just on catch up. I'm five hours behind everybody and trying to make sense of it all and seeing what looked like a very well edited document that was put out, which is falsified and fraudulent. You could potentially say so. Again, it's the, the the lads of before me, yeah, Stuart Mitchell put the nail on the head. It's you know, clickbait, it's diluting everything. You know, it's business, things happen, move on. I want to talk about football. And that's all I'll say, man. It's because it's not my remit, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's you know, it, it is frustrating for, for everybody uh, when you see stories like this, but we should be used to it, George, shouldn't we? We've got you know, oh, we've got such a big reputation aren't, and aren't we Newcastle big... United? Aren't yeah. we Newcastle United? And that's that's part of the problem. Uh we're stuck up here in the northeast, out on a limb, on our own, and when something nice happens, they miss it. If something bad happens, they're all here. All the all the ravens and uh, vultures are circling St James's Park to, to finish it off all together. It, it 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 that's the bit that bothers me. What the lads Neil and Stu said it all, and I couldn't add to that, and I wouldn't want to. Uh, but what I will say is, it annoys me intensely that it's all framed in a negative sense, totally negative towards the Castle United and. We, you, we, you know, yes, we, 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 we are getting a little bit used to it. But on the other hand, there's some of these people that write this stuff. I wish they would sit next to me in St. James's Park so I could give their shins a going over. Uh, it really is is awful uh, and negative. And it, it actually it does the region down as well because uh, they're not just talking about a football club now. We're talking about a, a, a le legitimate and uh, important part of the city, an important part of the re region, despite what the people down 13 miles down the road think, uh, this is where it happens. This, this is where everybody wants to party, except the journalists in the South. They want to knock, 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 knock. Well, knock away, boys. It, it isn't going to happen because we won't let it happen. And, uh, yeah, it, and to... to uh, single out the one individual who from day one uh, with lots of help with people I see in front of me on the screen has made made it her mission to make Newcastle United great again and she's well on her way and to, to, ta to take it out of that lady is just I mean she's got broad shoulders anybody that could be a girl around in Prince Andrews must have broad shoulders for God's sake um, so uh, you know it uh, it it just uh, uh, is a pity. It, it it's a shame. Um, but uh, what she needs to hear from us is, you know, she's still our Amanda, and that that's all that matters. Magnus, um, 
I think, you know, when you're a Newcastle fan, you get used to these kind of stories, don't you? Well, yeah, we've gone through a lot of negativity before and, uh, and lots of bad media. And, and uh, uh, To be honest with you uh, guys, uh, I, I only saw the headline, so I, I was uh, slightly worried about the, uh, the issue and, and, and I really didn't have time uh, to read the whole article, you know, from uh, I saw something about it in Chronicle. I guess they were trying to uh, make sense of it uh, as well. Uh, but I'm kind of glad that I didn't uh, waste any energy or, or time uh, on it uh, after hearing what you guys had to say. I, uh, all day long, I was, I was more devastated about the news on Joe Willock and, and, um, and uh, our, our midfield. Uh, so uh, uh, negative press is always going to happen. It's uh, uh, really annoying that, uh, that they're, if they're creating stuff just to, uh, to, to get clickbait. Uh, but uh, if this is just, a, you know, I'm not a, a, a massive businessman. Uh, uh, on the other hand, they are. So uh, any movements like this, uh, they are they are well within the, their power and, and and know what they're doing and I'm sure this was just a a, a typical sort of uh, action that, that needed to be done uh, uh, in in the, in the whole scene of things you know so uh, so I, in uh, in the process I still trust and I, and I hope this was just a yeah a, a silly news uh, clickbait that that doesn't really even matter. I'll believe your views on the uh, the story that surfaced this morning. Uh, well, as a mag, yani, as you said, lads, it's, I, I, for me, I used to it. It's, the, it's always continuous every season with these uh, nonsense, uh, just just uh, to selling the paper, putting uh, some words. And uh, for me, uh, I, I barely have time to watch games <laughs> to, to read this stuff. So I'm, I'm not really uh, uh, giving m much more to, uh, attention. Okay, uh, we uh, all, always, yeah, go on. Can I that? Yeah, it's go interesting on. Listen, listen to everybody, especially Magnus, saying, Oh, well, I saw the headlines and that made us worry. That's what they want, that's exactly yeah. what they want, mate. Yeah. Um, and the problem is the other thing you've got to take time to do, and not a lot of people have, is to go to a journalist in question and say, Well, what's his agenda? So, there's one I could name, and I won't name him, who does stir the pot when it comes to Newcastle United. I know he's a Newcastle United fan, very much a Newcastle United fan, but he's also very heavily involved in the Labour Party, very, very left-wing, and has very, very anti-Saudi thoughts and feelings. And that can't help but come out in some of the things he writes. So his agenda then is always going to be negative towards anything that Saudi does. And so we have to take that on board when that's written. And... In, in reality, do I all have time for that? Not really. I'm a geek. I'd probably make time for that. But there's not many people do. And that's why that's what they rely on. We, we have to spend our time keeping it real, nudging people in the right direction and saying, look, some of this is white noise and, what, and they're getting out of it what they want. They're getting the clicks, they're getting the hits, they're getting the traffic through the websites these days. It's not about selling newspapers these days, let's be honest about it. Um... And, and so it's really very difficult. It's very difficult for any fan, not just sat worldwide, but even sat in the region who isn't really up with it. No wonder that's going to suddenly think, bloody hell, there's a rabbit off here. Yeah, there's something going terribly wrong just at the right time. Isn't this typical Newcastle? Typical Newcastle, you know, we're going to win something and World War Three starts and that's what happens to Newcastle. And, and that's what they want. And that's where we've got a sort of... Everything we talked about years ago about geopolitics and the minutiae and how things are being framed still applies. Yeah, very true. Very true. I do want to take this question that um, I was sent on uh, X uh, this morning, and uh, that was from Paul. Uh, he said, I've got a question for the panel. With Joe Willock being rested until the end of the season, do you worry this could be a situation like Botman? In the end, resting him didn't work. He had to have an operation. We can't afford to wait until the season starts to see if rest is the cure, or can we? Cheers, Paul. Uh, yeah, Mitch, I mean, you know, it's natural, isn't it, for Newcastle fans to worry about injuries, especially yes. after what happened with Botman. Um, is rest the well, right thing for an Achilles, Mitch? After this, this season in, in its entirety, you know, the, the next, uh, next to us in the injury table has something like a third of the minutes less missed than we have. It's ridiculous. 
Um, with regards to, I, I find the, the situation with Willock was really complex because it was a knee problem, then it was an Achilles problem, and then it just went quiet and nobody said anything. And did he need rest or did he need surgery? And then he's come back and he's looked really, really good. And now we're back to, we're back to, you know, um, well, is it rest? Is it this? For me, um, again, I take my, my attitude from American sports and how the deal with injuries in American sports and Kevin probably can input on this one. If the surgery to be done, they do the surgery. Bang. Simple as that. The, the, the don't do rest very often. And the players who do go through that tend to come back and get re-injured. And I'll name a player, tight end, called Darren Waller, who's probably up there with the elite group of tight ends on his day, but he's had two seasons where his hamstrings and his knees have been absolutely packed. And somebody said two years ago he needed an operation. Well, funnily enough, he's just had that operation in the close season. And so um, that's the American attitude. They're very, very much more hands-on and pragmatic to somebody missing time through surgery because they would have rather have the finished article back and they know what they're getting back in a certain time period than fanny around with rehab if it isn't the way to go. Um, and I'm not saying that's not the way to go with Joe Willock. We don't really know what the injury is. Um, the one thing I would say, um, if we've got something we can look back in the past at, where an Achilles was fannied on with, Stephen Taylor. Yeah. And, and he went entirely in the middle of a game, if you remember. And that was him gone for eight months. So it's not something you should fanny around with, in my opinion. He's going to be a big miss, Stu. But I, you know, I think, I think, you know, he, he wasn't really the player that he had been, was he? When he came back, there was clearly an issue there, and the fact that he had an injury and then picked up another injury as he was recovering—that that's really what's written him off. I think you've hit the nail on the head, Steve. It's not a case of being the player he has been. I think they're taking this precautionary measure to make him the player they want him to be. Yeah, and, and the extra rest will do him good it's an Achilles he has a languid running style he does have that burst of pace we know he carries the ball and, and he's, he's a different type of footballer to just about anyone else we've got in the whole squad for for the way he, he, he runs uh, and it is explosive you know he, he could be standing still for a long time and well not a long time but a long time in, in football and all of a sudden he's off running with the ball at his feet for 30 yards um, pivoting one way then the next so it's it's I think with what's happened during the season, the, the, the amount of injuries we had and as the season draws closer, the the, the I think they'll be more precautionary than risk. And and it's it makes sense, you know, where we'll finish the season is where we'll finish. The it shows they've got enough trust in the players that are currently available and the ones that are close to coming back to finish the season in a in a high enough position to qualify for Europe. Then what would the point in being risking them to put them out for eight ones if we can just let them come back and have a full rehab and be strong in the in the summer? Now there was also talk about could are they resting them to sell them? Well, no. For me, Joe Willock is he's not one of the blue chip players, and he's probably not one of the first start in eleven. Uh, if everyone was fully fit and we we get the new acquisitions, at least three or four new acquisitions. He wouldn't be in the first team, but he's a very, very valuable squad member. And but again, that goes cap in hand that the fact that he is valuable and he's younger, you know, I, I can't see them sacrificing someone like him because of his age, uh, and then have to spend probably more to get someone with equal or lesser ability in. So uh, I, I do believe that Eddie Howe has a big uh, future for Joe Willock as part of the squad. And I think that they're just treating them with kid gloves now. It's, it's easier to do it that way than run the risk that there's been too many being injured over, over the stage of the season. So let's get them fully fit. And as, as Mitch said there regarding the how they do it in American football, we'll know we'll, we'll get a prime Joe Willock back. And if he can break in that first team, then that's a better Joe Willock than we've seen previously. So we've got to trust them and know what they're doing with them. 
Yeah, I, I mean, do you worry about it, Kev, a little bit? You know, the, the, the point Paul was trying to make is, you know, we rested Botman and then, you know, he came back, he came back, he wasn't the same player and then he's, he's gone out and now he's had to have an operation. I mean, do, do, do you get where Paul's coming from? Absolutely. And just to follow on with Mitch, um, from the United States perspective, it's not just NFL and it's every sport you get put on an IL or an IR, which is the injury list or an injury reserve list for a specific amount of days to then fans know, OK, he's out for 10 days. So if that day, them 10 days expire, however long it is, whatever the, the rules are within certain sports, then as fans, as the media, the whole country knows this person's going to go and get a surgery done. Then, I mean, we've had a guy here in the, for the Atlanta Braves, he's done a, a tendon in his elbow and he's had his surgery done two days later and he's out for the rest of the year. But at least we know, then they can the club can then rebuild. They're not going to go down the recovery road because then that's just a longer process. It could be worse for him. So that's my, again, as a, not I'm saying a doctor or whatever, the, the, the makeup of the lower leg is complex. You've got a lot of fast twitch muscle fibers within that. So if you, within your calf and your um, persoas and all the rest of it, and then your Achilles, which hold it all together, if one of them goes and it becomes weak, then that puts a lot of stress on the, on the uh, Achilles tendon into the knee. So for me, I would rather go to the, the American road of put him, get him under the knife, get and actually explore what's going on. Because then we know the recovery process, we know the recovery time, regardless of the quality of player, it's in it, 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 but it's all about the player. It's all about, it's all for the betterment of him versus yes, he won't want to be involved in the team and the, uh, the 25 man squad moving forward as a squad player, even in the starting 11. But if we get this done early, then we can move forward. If we drag this out, kick the can down the road and see what happens in the summer or in the next year and in next season. Then, he, then we could be worse off because we don't know in terms, do we need a replacement of what Stu said of similar or better than spend, there's an expenditure. So if we have surgery now or an exploration into or whatever, I would prefer that road than, because look what happened to Sven Botman. You got a mixed, misdiagnosis, now he's out for four, 12, 14, however long months. At least we know. Now we know, then we can move on. That's my issue. That's my problem. I'd rather get this the, the problem solved and then we can deal with that and live with it and I take the news and but A by develop another young player coming in or whatever that looks like. So yeah, I would go do explore exploratory surgery or other holistic interventions that you could go down the there's multiple different ways you can look at it, but we need to know what actually is going on. And I prefer that. And then that makes me more comfortable versus the unknown. Yeah, that's definitely a good point you made there. Clinton, yeah, I just want to answer this because the, the comments are coming thick and fast. And I, yeah, well, there's going to be lots of changes, Clinton, uh, more corporate areas, 100%. I couldn't say what's going to happen, but yeah, the, the you know, the, a lot of the staff are telling us that is what is going to happen, 100%. George, Joe Willick and uh, the injury, have we done the right thing, taking them out of the firing line now? And, you know, I mean, I guess, you know, we've, yes. got, to, we've got to rely on the physios, you yes. know, and the guys at the he club. He can thank his lucky stars who haven't got the same manager as we had a year or two years ago. Because they either had him doing the mini Olympics, you know, <laughs> like he did with all. In fact, one or two of these injuries, I begin to wonder if some of that wasn't stored up when, when Bruce used to make them do this mini Olympics. You know, 100 metres, 200 metres, 400 metres, 1500 metres, 3000 metres. And I used to see some of them sit at the bottom of my garden and my fence, heaving their guts up because... <laughs> Because some of them weren't built to do that. You know, Dwight Gale, whose, uh, whose legs were absolutely knackered. And Bruce had him running thousands and thousands of metres. the last thing he should have been doing. So um, he can thank his lucky stars. He's not he's not in that. And absolutely right to take him out of the thing. And, and Neil and, and, and Stu and Kevin have, have nailed it, really. We need to know. It's no, it's no good ifs and buts. The difference with him this tight, this one, though, at the bottom of is... Botman made a decision himself that he didn't want operation. And that had to come back um, to bite him in the bum, to, to, to make him aware of what was happening. And it's, that was sad. 
But at least he know, even he knows where he's going now. And by the way, congratulations to him and his girlfriend because they've got a nice baby on the way as well. Um, so not wasting you know, his it, time, George. It's pun. Not wasting his time off. No, girl, like lady, why should he? Um, never mind. No, that's <laughs> <laughs> you're getting me off off piece now. Um, <laughs> you know, but no. Um, yeah, it, it it's it's right and and to, to do it right and and if it's if it's eight months now or, or how many ever months it is six months now, we we'll get it wrong. It could be another whole season, and that would be an absolute disaster for him, and a real disaster for us. Because as as others have said, he he carries something that some of the others don't have. He has the skill with the lightning pace. Um, I wish somebody would find a yard of pace for young Miley, the sort of pace that uh, that that, that, he, that Willick's got, um, and would have another world star in my hands. Uh, but no, that they're, they're doing the right thing and and uh, making sure it's right this time. No no ifs and buts and. Uh, uh, it may be that uh, you know he, he's been he's been guided and and uh, uh, people have whispered in his ear about what happened to, to Botman as well. So no, it, they're doing the right thing, Steve. It it, it could risk his entire career. I got, over the years that I've been supporting a number of very very talented players we've lost um, by injury that really shouldn't have happened. Um, you, you can run through them yourselves. Uh, George Dalton, Tony Green. You know, you can run through them all. Really, really talented players. And I would argue that some of that's because we didn't just get the thing right. Where this is playing safe. Well, let's play safe and get it right for the lad. Yeah, Magnus, um, you know, he's been a, a great a great signing, Joe Willock. But, you know, it's quite clear that we haven't had the same Joe Willock, uh, you know, that we signed. I mean, remember when he came in, he, he scored... You know, seven goals in a row. Not many, not many players have done that. And um, you know, he was a vital, vital cog in 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 Eddie Howe's early teams. But um, we haven't seen the real Joe Willock. So a period of rest is very important for him, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, I'll never forget that we were kind of in a relegation battle when uh, when he came in into the team. Steve Bruce was uh, the manager, and uh, uh, he came and scored. At, yeah, like you said, seven goals in a row. And I'll, I'll never forget his. Uh, his contribution to the team uh, during really, really rough times. Um, uh, I, I understand why uh, sometimes uh, during this season, what, what, what do we have? 11, 12 players uh, uh, still out. Uh, I can understand why in some occasions, like the, the, the story of uh, Sean Longstuff and uh, 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 being injected and, and uh, we're just really uh, scrapping together to get a, a full squad of senior players. Um, however, this is still a, a person, and he's a great guy, and uh, we we should uh, think of their health uh, first and foremost. And uh, 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 hopefully, we are getting uh, Trippier back, and uh, we should be able to have at least. Uh, I mean, uh, the, the midfield right now is pretty much auto picked. You know, it's uh, Elliot Anderson, John Longstaff, and uh, Bruno. Uh, however, I, I guess uh, I guess Matt Ritchie might need to put in a shift, and and then uh, Lewis Hall might have to uh, go uh, up a little bit further with uh, uh, with a bit of a luck. Maybe we're getting a trip here back. Uh, but but uh, first and foremost, you know, we need to take care of their health uh, long term. Uh, whether we are uh, thinking of uh, keeping, I mean, he's only twenty four years old, and uh, I I would. Um, very much like him to stay. On the other hand, if, if they're planning to, uh, whichever we, we decide uh, to do, uh, sell or, or, or keep him in the squad, uh, we need to uh, think of uh, his health. And uh, that should be number one, uh, uh, above all, uh, the health of the players and, and uh, hope for the uh, quick recovery because we've already dealt with, well, so many injuries this season. And uh, yeah, but, Think think of him first and uh, hope for the best. Yeah, I'll believe Joe Willock. Um, you know, the question I got asked earlier on uh, by uh, Stephen Kennedy. Um, he said, should we consider selling Willock and perhaps investing the money in somebody like Gibbs White in the summer? Um, he said that Willock always seems to be injured since he's been here. Great player on his day, though, but how frequent? 
Um, you know, what, what what's your views, Alwaleed, on on Joe Willock? I mean, should we should we get him back to his best? And is he a vital player? I mean, Eddie Howe says he is, but Eddie Howe very rarely says anything about players that that's negative. He's not going to, is he? He's the manager. He wants he wants to he wants to back his players. He wants to be positive. But what what would you do with Joe Willock? Uh, well, Steve, this season is exceptional uh, regarding the pressure. We weren't ready for the for the whole. Uh, to compete with all these uh, uh, champions. So I believe uh, uh, Joe and Joe Willick, uh, as you speak about Joe Willick, Joe Willick, he did great this uh, season. Uh, he have a, a great run. Uh, I'm not worried much about the injuries because for me, I have expl- any, uh, we all have explanations and reason for these uh, injuries because we play so much, so many games with the same uh, lineup uh, over and over. Uh, and let's say okay, somebody okay. I get, how much will uh, how much will sell Willick, for example, uh, twenty five million as same as we bought. So I don't think this is uh, really uh, an issue here. I think there is a, will be a review. Uh, some players will go. Some players, of course, some players will come in. But I don't think yeah, any Willick will be my first uh, option. Uh, injuries this season. Uh, Maybe the pressure of getting back well, because we are so we have so many pressure, so we treat the player quickly and quick return. I think this quick return causing this uh, repeated repeated uh, injuries. So uh, that's my opinion on this. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. We'll do. The, we'll play out with the ads because we've uh, we've you know lots to say on the Amanda Stavely situation, etc. So we'll, we'll we'll play out with the ads tonight. It is good to see Trippier and Wilson back in training. Tom, you are right. Talks of Joe Linton perhaps being back for the the final game as well. Of course, we've got Nick Pope to come back. Newcastle's going to have a strong squad going into the final uh, half a dozen games. Um, let me take a, a... Oh, yeah, roadblock as well. Thank you for the donation, mate. That'll go into the Malverno Wine Fund. Uh, believe it when the club says it's official. Everything else is probably bollocks. Yes, I, I, I would agree with that. Wholeheartedly, uh, roadblock. So, uh, a point well made. Um, I have got time. Uh, to squeeze a couple of these in, I didn't ask for it, but uh, people are used to it on uh, on a Wednesday night uh, that we ask George. Okay, just a couple, George. Uh, Tim says, question for George: Who does he fancy for the European Champions League final and winner? Um, Two teams we played in the group of death both got through. Yeah. Manchester City or PSG? Yeah, Man City for me. I think they'll do the the unofficial double. I think yeah. they'll do Man. I think yeah. they'll do the Premier League and the, yeah. and the yeah, Champions League again. Um, we did have another one. Who is your all-time hero in life, George? In life, oh, in life, oh, dear me. It could be oh. a footballer, I suppose. Well, you know the answer I'd give. It was just football. Um, yeah. Uh, it would be Jackie Milburn, but in life, oh, um, it's got to be a writer. It's uh, um, Grapes of Wrath. Oh, come on, who was it? Um, John Steinbeck. Um, anybody wants to read a history of a man who did everything? John Steinbeck did everything and still had time to write books. So, if you want an all-time hero, that that's my all-time hero. There you go. That keeps your fans happy, George. Okay, um, I love this one. That's why I'm going with it. I, I know there's lots of people asking about the, the ground video. Mark Taylor says, have you seen the video showing the options for St. James's? I think we'll dig into that on the Amigos. I haven't had time to watch it. I've got a busy week this week, but I will make a point of watching that video. And uh, I think we'll start with that on uh, on on Friday with the Amigos. Has the defence been better? Well, Trippier has been out. What a great question, Mitch. Um, has it? Stats would suggest otherwise. Um, I think losing Trippier and Pope have been more impactful to our back four than we realise, even though you then can factor in the individual errors that uh, Trippier made through what, in hindsight, turns out to have been a very difficult time for him personally. Um, I think... The defence has to be more 
uh, organised without him in because there's nobody else like him when he's in the side. The, the way our formation has worked and worked very successfully has been on the basis that when he pushes forward, well, back four effectively slides across and becomes a back three when we're in possession and then reverts to a back four when we lose possession. And we're not really being able to fully accomplish that with him out of the team. Although Tino Livermento really does bring similar attributes to the table, but we've been deprived of him for periods of time too. So I think it's very difficult to pin it on is Trippier in or out being the... Um, is the defence better or not? I think I'd like to see the stats, though. I think the stats would belie that. It's an interesting one, isn't it, Kev? Uh, Trippier has been wonderful with assists, but um, I think, you know, like like every player, he had, he had a little spell, didn't he? I mean, which, unfortunately for us, coincided this with us going out of the uh, the Carabao Cup at the hands of Chelsea through his mistake, and then it was a couple of more. But that, that was at the time, and again, we've had no official confirmation, but we're led to believe... You know there was there was problems in his personal life. What that was, we'll probably never know. But there was something certainly niggling away at him, which which did affect not just his performances but the back fours. Exactly. So allegedly, what well, whatever was going on obviously affects player performance. I mean, that's just natural within anybody, you know, with work life or anything. But I, I, I again, I agree with Mitch in terms of I'd like to see stats and, and numbers and with or withouts and. And things like that and yes we go to a three when he bombs down the right hand side and all that sort of thing within a tactical sense but um i think from a leadership standpoint regardless of what going what's going on outside of outside of the white lines i think he's a, a massive miss um yes dan burns put as a phrase stepped up to the plate essentially and and led that back line brilliantly alongside fabian shaw um is a three um and I, like I said, i've said for you for weeks and months that we should that's the way i think we should go but um it was needs must in terms of the, you know who we're playing against and whatever but yeah um it'd be very interesting to say i don't, I don't think it's a massive miss it, 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 essentially but he, he brings a lot to the table and what in in his performances from yes dead ball situations um again that would be another great start to see how many actually contributions he's had from a dead ball um and all those other things so um again it's just unfortunate that he's picked up this injury yes we went on a little run where it doesn't look like we've uh, needed him at all but at the same time we do need him in and around the the, the dressing room in and around on the on on the park itself to get somebody by the scruff of the neck and say, hey, this is a standard that we need to play at and plus his personal performance as well. So again, it's a, it's a double-edged sword type of question where do you need him or do you, do you not? You know, but again, with Tino Libramento, we need, he, he's a, a, a brilliant fill-in or a, 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 the, the next one to fill his uh, trippiest boots in terms of uh, moving forward. But again, we haven't seen enough of him. But once he, when he has, when we have seen him, I think he contributes a little bit more. His exuberance, his youthfulness, his um, desire, and all those traits. But um, yeah, so we'll see what happens when Trippy is fully fit. If he go, reverts back to the, the good old four three three, or does he keep the same? So that's the problem. That's a wonderful problem for Eddie Howe to have. It, it, you know that, that that's what he gets paid the, the money for to do and and tinker around with things and get the best out of players. So. Again, it's again it's unfortunate for the player, but the team's been pretty successful over the ter the length of time that he's been out. So again, does he revert to like a squad player role at next season, or you know, to peter out his his career, um, or does he continually just continue to start and clean the Libramento fills that role? So again, those are the decisions that the club have to make moving forward. So yes, a miss, but not really a big miss. It, it, it's a it's a it's a balancing out with that. So yeah, um, we'll, we'll see what happens move, uh, moving forward. I'll lead. Big decisions is what Kev's talking about there, and he is right. Um, Trippier has the defense been better or, or worse? Uh, well, it's uh, depending the uh, interval of the season. When we have a pressure, uh, 
Trippier was playing most of the games. But now we are less pressure. We just have, uh, I think, seven or six games left. So uh, it's uh, different circumstances. So, but for my personal opinion, uh, no, uh, I don't agree. I agree is the best. It's with with Trippier. Okay, Stu. Well, questions like this it, it frustrates me. It really does. It's like we seem as a fan base to have short term memory loss. It was only a couple of months ago everyone was exulting how great Kieran Trippier is, and he's the He's been the best signing we've had. Now all of a sudden he's shit. We don't need him. Like, is there no middle ground with it? Uh, so on the on the basis that we've had a couple of clean sheets without Trippier and the team, does that mean that we don't need Joe Linton? We don't need Tenali? We don't need Botman? We don't need Pope? Do you know? You know? It's 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 annoying. I mean, I think what happens is when he, he has been such an inspiration since since he signed, and I wouldn't be surprised if. He's offered a contract extension and he sees out his days with us, uh, whether he does or not. But I, I'm quite sure the way they've been tying players up during the course of the season that they would want someone like him. Um, maybe where we've been a bit greedy because we were very reliant on Trippier, especially in his first season with us. Uh, after, well, especially when he first came and he showed his class and his leadership. But we've had a glimpse of the future with Tino Livramento. So it's like, oh, but we don't need that as much now and Kraft can do a job. And Kieran Trippier is still an international class right back uh, and, and he's injured. And, and I think we should give the fellow a bit more respect. And I'm not the Kieran Trippier fan club, but at the, at the same well, I am, but I, I, I'm not leading it. At, at the same time, we, we, we have to think, well, two clean sheets against a, a team with no heart and against a team with not much to play for doesn't mean that we can do, we can just discard people like Kieran Trippier. Um, also, don't underestimate the role that he's played in in the advancement of Tito Livramento. Positional sense, showing him how to defend in certain positions, how to use his touch, how to use his body, everything else. He's, he's been such a big signing for us. I, I think it's, sorry for having a little bit of a moan, but I think it's a bit disrespectful saying we're better off without him. We, we've craved players of his quality. And as I said earlier, we were saying he's probably the best right back Newcastle's ever had in our lifetime. Then, then he's been the best signing we've ever had since the takeover. And now we don't need him. It's, it, I can't fathom it. I'm, I'm sorry, but it, it doesn't make sense to us. Uh, yeah, I would, I would agree. <laughs> I mean, it's been, it's been... Listen, he's been he's been he's been the most influential signing that Eddie Howe has made for me. Look, we've made some bloody good signings, uh, but we go back to 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 when Newcastle was staring relegation in the face, and we you know we played you know Cambridge in the FA Cup and got knocked out. Um, I remember being you know at that game. I went and I went in the Gallagher Strawberry Corner actually for that game, and yeah. I just I was amazed at at, at at his leadership quality. Yeah, we got beat, we got knocked out the FA Cup. That wasn't our focus. We we had to stay up. But I just saw something which I hadn't seen for for, for many many um, for many years, and that was organisation. Um, you know, heart on his sleeve, talking, encouraging, and yeah, listen, he's been a wonderful, wonderful player. I, I don't want him to leave. I want him to stay next. I want him to be here next season. I'm not sure if he will be. Um, we've heard lots of rumours and lots of stories that he could potentially go in the summer. If he does, he goes with our best wishes. Um, Just, and, 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 if, sorry, mate. If, 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 and I say if, rather than when, we qualify for the Europa League, it, it gives us more games. So there's a higher chance of advancing at th uh, further rounds. We'll have a bigger squad. There's, there's, it's quite realistic that we would play 60 games next season. Neither him nor Tino Livramento would play 60. But if we said they had 30 games each until the the final pass of the baton goes into the following season, I would take that all day long and then have Trippier. Who would not want his enthusiasm, his experience running like one of the youth teams or having to say with the reserves or something like that, or even part of the coaching team? You know, the, the guy's a diamond and we shouldn't just discard people like that as, as quickly. And I'm not saying you have, I, I'm saying that it's it's what we need to be keeping people like that uh, for, for everything he does on the pitch. Before he got injured, you had the big, best assists in the league. 
He did, yeah. <laughs> in, he did. In, in Europe. In Europe. We, we won two games without Bruno, so she would get rid of him. It's, 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 uh, I can't get my head around why we'd want that's, people to be discussing and get rid of their best players. That's social media mentality, though. That's it. You know what I mean? It is social media mentality. I think it's a great question because it's got us debating. It is. It's got us, it's got us debating it. That's why it's a good question. That's why I picked it out tonight. George? Well, who was the first to believe in the project? He's playing for a top European club, probably well paid, and, and probably in a happy place. And he risks all of that to come to a club that's more than likely every pundit in the country, every pundit in Europe was saying, well, Newcastle United are down, they'll never win another match now. And he, he volunteered. He came to help with all of that. And we shouldn't shouldn't let somebody like that go. And what's he like on the pitch? Well, look, he, he controls what happens when he's on the pitch. Because look look at the antics at the penalty at, uh, at Nottingham Forest. He took the ball away and made sure that the Nottingham Forest goalkeeper thought he was going to take the penalty and then put it down and and, and then Isaac put the ball in the back of the net. Well, you know, you need, I keep saying he is on here. We need streetwise player. And there's one thing about Kieran Trippier, he's streetwise. And I agree with Stu. I would love Kieran Trippier to be here for the next five years, never mind one year, and, and somehow find him a place to work with the youngsters to to share his experience and his influence that, that, that he's got. Um Look, look where he is when there's any bother. Who's first to go running to protect his mates? Kieran Trippier. Get a new player who's first to go and meet them in a the dressing room. Kieran Trippier. There's a job for him to do there straight away if he keeps going. No, I, let's keep Kieran Trippier here. As to whether it's been better since he was out, I don't think so. And I don't think the stats would, would back it either. Um, and as for wearing his heart and his sleeve, well, sometimes he wears it too hard. And that's how he got into the row with the fans at Bournemouth. I can live with that. I can live with that. It's somebody that really believes. If he didn't really believe, I'd, you know, I'd be like everybody else. I'd want him on his bike. But please, please, if you listen, Kieran Tripper, don't go anywhere. Not not, not for the next 10 years, if you like. I think there's something, something to bottle in Kieran Tripper yeah, and, uh, and uh, make the best of it for Newcastle. I just want to point out as well, uh, Alan McKenzie's had trouble in the chat all night and it was me who mentioned how to fix it. So just let Jules and Spenny know. <laughs> uh, Magnus, uh, Kieran Trippier, should he stay or should yeah. he go? With, you know, it was the question. I think it's 99% of the people in the chat have said, look, he's quality, keep him. Um, probably 1% saying, well, he's past his sell-by date, I would bring somebody else in, but I, I would keep him, Mary. I'd, I'll keep him as long as we can, as long as he can kick the ball. Yeah, I agree with you. You know, he still not uh, uh, lost uh, any of the attributes that uh, I wish for in a, in a right back. And uh, uh, I haven't forgotten uh, how he came in. You know, uh, with regards to uh, Kirian Trippier, he, he improved other players around him. I, I think uh, Emil Kraft has learned a lot from him, you know, and, uh, and uh, with his encouragement, you know, it was a great help when we were in the relegation battle, even though he was on the crutches, you know, uh, running around with the team absolutely everywhere. Uh, I, I want to, uh, as far as I know, his contract uh, expires in 2025. I would like to see uh, uh, an extension for at least another two years. And hell, why not make him the next Thiago Silva kind of guy? Uh, uh, stay in there until he may be even, uh, 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 yeah, like... Uh, uh, was it Mitch uh, touched up on uh, uh, make him a part of the uh, uh, the, the coaching uh, staff and, and uh, he's a leader of a man and uh, he, he's only going to keep on improving and uh, and bringing his uh, experience and, and uh, uh, sort of uh, 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 yeah uh, teaching uh, the uh, young younger generations coming into the team uh, I I uh, Long may it continue, and uh, 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 I don't think Emil Kraft would have uh, been half the player he was without working with a guy like uh, uh, Kieran Trippier. So long may it continue, and uh, I, I want him going absolutely no place, uh, and uh, th that is uh, how I feel about the matter. Good stuff, Magnus. Just give a shout out to your uh, Facebook page, please, mate, just so people can subscribe to it if they want to get in touch. Oh yeah, um, the the Facebook page is. Um, uh, should I just send it there, uh, or uh, it, it's it's called? Um, 
uh, uh, right now it's called the. Uh, you're not going to understand me saying this. Uh, Stirlingsman. Uh, if people, if people, if people, if people search up Newcastle United Iceland, it, it's there, mate. That's how I found it. it comes up, comes up. Uh, there. Uh, 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 please feel free to get in touch. We are uh, we are only getting bigger. We had a meeting the other day. There, there's talks about having a. a uh, fan game in Newcastle next season with with uh, other fan clubs and uh, and uh, please if, if any of you guys that are watching uh, find yourselves in Iceland get in touch we we can uh, both give advice and uh, if you're just there for for a weekend uh, come and see the game with us good stuff excellent stuff great show thanks to George Stu Magnus Alwaleed Kevin and Mitch I'm going to be back tomorrow night. I'm going to do an hour's Q&A around about half past seven. I've um, got a busy week, as I say, this week, but I will pop on and do an hour's show. Uh, Amigos, usual time, five o'clock on Saturday, uh, Friday, sorry, Saturday morning is uh, a pre-recorded show I did with Gibbo, a bit like the Super Mac one last night, which was live. This one with Gibbo is excellent. We covered some great points and great to have the two of them just being able to chat because uh, obviously the, the two of them in tandem is great, but... Nice to have them just have an hour to themselves uh, once in a blue moon. So we've managed to do that. And then the professionals on Sunday. What time, Stu? What time, Mitch? Six o'clock? Back to normal. Back to six normal. o'clock. Yeah, get six o'clock. Get yeah. the Sunday evenings going again. Six six o'clock on uh, on Sunday then for the professionals. And uh, we just want uh, to give a shout out, yep. Alan, who has had problems in the chat. Was it to tell you all to get Isaac booked for Golden Boot and the tune to qualify for Europa? Uh, got sixteen to one and six to four. He says, "Please bet, nice respons one. Uh, please bet responsibly uh, if you do decide to bet." And if you're Tenali, don't do it. Go on. One George. more, tr one more trip. Yeah, thing. If yeah, he stays, it if he stays, it'll keep Emily happy. There we go. Yeah. He's always going to get it. <laughs> One, one more thing about Trippier, you know, when a blue chip uh, uh, player like him is out, then the, the rest of the players are going to work that much harder. And that's what they absolutely did. You see what's going on in Chelsea and uh, and uh, uh, Eric Ten Hag uh, storming out. Uh, I've, I've seen a lot of togetherness lately and, uh, and uh, I hope to see more of it in the last few games. You know what, Magnus, with the backs against the wall and the us and them mentality, there's nobody, there's no team better than Newcastle. And I think people like, you know, pe people in, in the press, people on podcasts, people people all saying that's our season over. That was just what Eddie Howe needed to go into the dressing room and go, everyone thinks it's over. Because he's mentioned it. He knows that's what we were saying. He knows that's what people were saying. Not everybody. I certainly said it. Certainly some people on this panel didn't. Stu's always said we're going to qualify for Europe. I said the season was over. I don't I don't uh, I don't apologize for that at all because at the time that's how I felt. But you know what? If that's helped Eddie Howe, go in the dressing room and say, You've heard what they're saying, get out there, get your fingers out your backside and go and go and prove these people wrong. And I tell you what, that's there's no better there's no better team than Newcastle United when that happens. But great point that madness. Great show, lads. Uh, I as I said, I'm back tomorrow night, half past seven. Have a great day. I'm gonna play out with the ads. Take care. Good Cheers, to see everybody. Cheers, lads. Big thanks to all our sponsors, Skips and Bins, telephone 0800 2545 253, email inquiries at skipsandbins.com, website skipsandbins.com, easy contract free and pay as you go waste collection. Thanks to Mr. Vicky's Sources, handmade in Cumbria, their website, mrvickys.co.uk, telephone 01768 210 102, or email info at mrvickys.co.uk. Thanks to United Group Travel. There are no strangers in our tours, just friends you haven't met yet. Their website, unitedgrouptravel.com. Email beverly.ugtl at gmail.com. Telephone 01670 632 460 or mobile 0791 666 4174. Thanks to Media Arts for the technical side of things. And you can also find us as a podcast on iTunes, Spotify, or other podcast providers. You can subscribe to the channel by hitting the subscribe button underneath this video. Hit the all notifications bell so you don't miss a show. Hit the thumb up to like the channel and click share to share to your social media. 
If you want to join the channel, then click join for as little as $1.99 a month. If you want to become a member for a one-off £25 payment, email john at nufcmatters.com or go to membership at the website nufcmatters.com. If you've got a smartphone, hold your camera over the QR code and it'll take you straight there. We also help the food bank on this channel. Go to nufcfansfoodbank.co.uk to the match day bucket and you can leave a virtual donation today.